All right, welcome back from that report. Now, the Minister of Information and National Orientation outlined the government's recent efforts to provide relief for citizens. He stated that the federal government had distributed 740 truckloads of grains to state and that the 50 kg bags of rice are now available for purchase at 40,000 naira per bag at designated centers nationwide. The minister explained that these rice supplies have been made available across all states with centers set up to allow those in need to buy the rice at a set price. But Nigerians are wondering if that would actually do anything. But he expressed the government's um, expectation that the food prices will decrease, citing the arrival of rainy season as a contributing factor. He also highlighted that the student loan scheme and the planned rollout of CNG kits as uh, additional measures to ease the cost of living. However, he acknowledged unavoidable logistical challenges that have delayed the full implementation of the CNG bus program. Well, public affairs analyst uh, Mustafa Iwenla joins me now for more discussion on this nationwide protest and, of course, all the implications are economically. Uh, good morning to you, uh, Mustafa. Thanks for joining us on Business Insights. Yes, thank you for having me. Okay, first of all, the strike, uh, not all I going strike, nationwide protest uh, has been called for uh, from the 1st of October, from tomorrow to uh, the 10th. You know, lots of uh, uh, issues have come up, uh, security issues, uh, you know, uh, that it might be hijacked by folks. And uh, even the organized private sector has also come out to say how it would affect the economy. But let's start with the stance the federal government is putting right now, saying that um, about 750 truckloads of um, rice, uh, 50 kg uh, has been, uh, bags of rice have been, you know, put at designated areas to be sold at 40,000 naira. Is it just scratching the surface, or what's your opinion, really? All right, so to start with, I think it's very important that we we put out the message that uh, there is absolutely no need for the nationwide protest. Also, yes, the uh, 1999 Constitution, uh, Section 40, is clear that people have a right to peaceful assembly. Mm. But with the current state of the economy and with the fallout of what happened during NSAS, mm. of course, the whole country is quite apprehensive as we speak. There's a lot of tension in the air, and um, that's why people are saying saying no to any form of protest because we've been have, we've seen how our last protest during the NSAS was poorly managed by our security operatives, and I, I think I think we, I think I think we we saw that they were quite overwhelmed. But again, we are currently in a state where even some of the protesters or would be protesters are saying that. A state of emergency needs to be declared on our economy, particularly with the inflation rates. As we speak, two days ago, our inflation rate is put to about 38%. Just two weeks ago, when we had this conversation, it was about 34%. And now the government is saying they want to give out 50 kg of rice and sell it at the rate of 40,000 there. One of the one of the things we are doing with our uh, economic uh, policies and all that. I think the government is not looking inward to, you know, prefer long-term solutions. Mm -hmm. So selling 50 kg of rice for 40,000 naira is that an ultimate solution to the economic issues we are facing? And by the way, how many Nigerians, you and I, will not have access to such palliatives? So we've seen what happened during the time of COVID-19. Palliatives were given out and they were scuffled somewhere along the line. We've seen what happened during the time of even COVID, even loans were given out to SMEs. How many SMEs got the loans? So all these are issues that we have tried over time and we, mm. we have failed in, in terms of, you know, making sure that those that are directly in need of those palliatives get it. So selling 50 kg of rice for 40,000 naira for me is not a solution to our economic issues. Mm. I mean, our inflation rate is currently rising every day, every, 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 every other time we wake up. Yeah. And if we're not careful, it's going to lead our economy to comatose, oh. a state where it will no longer continue to move forward or backward. But again, the government, I think, I think that Mr. President, Mr. Bola Metunubu is doing so much to see how we can salvage the current situation at hand. Just yesterday, we've seen how what played out when it, when it instructed uh, NNPC to start selling crude oil to 
Dangote and other local refineries in Naira, not in dollars. And we know that the ripple effect, the, 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 the good side of this is that it will drastically reduce the price for pump, for, 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 I mean, pump price for fuel. And it will also stabilize the, you know, the price for fuel. I mean, just yesterday I bought fuel somewhere at the gas station for 1,000 naira per liter, not black market. Mm. On Sunday, I bought the 800 naira per liter somewhere. So you see that even, even the oil marketers are doing what they like. Mm. And nobody is sanctioning them to say, because this is one of the root causes of our problems. Once the price for fuel goes up, the price for every other goods and commodities goes up. And by, you know, by saying that, by instructing NNPC to say, okay, start selling crude oil for refineries in Naira. I mean, why, I mean, Nigeria is a Naira economy. We cannot be selling crude oil to our, you know, uh, refineries in dollars. This is the crude oil that, that, I mean, that is, my, you know, gotten from here. So a situation where we take our crude oil to neighboring countries to refine and also bring back you know, we, we export out crude oil to refine it. We bring it back to Nigeria to, you know, to start to start selling. Those are the issues that, you know, it's, it's kind of stifling our economy. Yeah. It's straight, so it's putting a lot of pressure on our foreign expenses. And such monies can be saved. One of the, one of the issues that we have in Nigeria is we are kind of wasteful with the way we spend our scarce resources. Now we are saying that we don't want people to protest, and that's because we don't want people to protest because we've seen the aftermath of what happened. A lot of people have not recovered from the protests from NSAS. People took loans from banks to start businesses. Those every all the items were vandalized. Critical assets were vandalized. So, and if you are not careful, so when people go out for protest and vandalize properties, scarce resources will be taken to reinstate those properties. And we're saying that Nigeria is indebted. We have seen what our government is doing. We keep, you know, taking loans from, for, from foreign countries to reinvest in our own economy. So all these are issues. So it is, it is very critical that the government, our monetary policy committees, our, you know, finance ministers, there needs to be some sort of roundtable discussion on the way forward to rejig okay. the economy. The economy right now, is in a total mess. Okay. Speaking of uh, rejigging the economy, you talked about um, short-term solutions and um, you know not being enough to tackle these issues head-on. Now, a school of thought would want to say that if the federal government could have been able to sell uh, these uh, bags of rice that they are talking about at forty thousand uh, right now, so that means they could have done something like months ago. So, how come they cannot really? turn out or channel that subsidy to farmers so that way they can actually produce and uh, maybe produce at a lower cost so that way uh, whatever they are bringing to the market will also be subsidized by the government. At the end of the day, Nigerians can actually still buy instead of having to uh, wait for imported rice that Nigerians buy at least about 80,000 right now, meaning that um, they could have done something even before now. So, so it, is, it, is, it is very, it is very, it is very um, sad that we have a government that will wait till things go out of hand before taking proactive measures mm. to looking for long-term solutions. And I've said it that short-term solutions will not get us anywhere. Just last, just a few days ago, the government, the president had finally signed the new minimum wage into law mm. of 70,000 naira. But again, I said it somewhere yesterday, that's also a short-term solution. 70,000 naira will not get anybody anywhere. Mm -hmm. I did a, I did a, I did a further, I further demystified the minimum wage. A average Nigerian worker will work for about 160 hours. If you, you know, do a, if you do a, a, a if you do a division and all that, that, that tells us that a average Nigerian worker is going to be earning 400 naira per day. Mm. That will not get anybody anywhere. So yes, it's a step in the right direction, but a long-term solution is we need to industrialize this, um, the country. As we speak today, a lot of commodities that we consume in this country are being imported. We need to industrialize Nigeria. Our industries are shutting down. We keep saying it, but yet now we're talking about farmers. Farmers need to be you know, highly motivated. A lot of farmers go to banks to get loans. I know, I know people who are very big in agriculture. Yeah. 
But right now, they are also struggling because the cost of borrowing is, is crazy. Just last week, CBN has also reviewed the interest rate to 26.75%. You know, yes. So a farmer who goes to the bank now to get a loan, at, obviously, he's not going to get at the benchmark interest rate. Mm -hmm. He's going to get at maybe 30 or 35% from commercial banks. So that tells you that that farmer is practically running that agricultural business for the bank because for the next five, 10 years, he's going to be servicing the bank. So that's so a lot of this. So we need to, we need, we need to, you know, give our agricultural, you know, our farmers an environment that is very enabling. Let the government invest more in agriculture. That's the only way that we can bring down the prices of food items. A country where we still depend solely, even the, even the, even the, even the fertilizers being used by these farmers, are, most of them have been imported. They are not locally made. So, so a, company, a country that is very that is dependent so much on importation, like somebody said, is going to be the indirectly importing poverty. Yeah. So we need to industrialize this country. Yeah. People have to start. We have to start producing stuff by ourselves. Importation will not get us anywhere. If you look at the local the local things that we produce in this country, maybe rice, beans. But sometimes, even if you even look at this local rice that we manufacture, it's not even edible. Oh. So a lot of us, to use, if you go to the house of any average big man in this country, you won't find them eating the local rice. Okay. So how do we? So how do we make? How do we make this? How do we find it? Make it easy for our farmers, oh. such that they have all the tools and resources they need to produce something very standard. Oh. A lot of a lot of uh, you know uh, items that we produce in Nigeria are not up to standard, and that's why our SOM comes in. You will buy some look from uh, made in Nigeria items. It will last you for the next couple of. It will it will serve you. It will give you value for your money, and that's why we need to encourage these people. There's a lot that needs to happen in our agricultural system. Yeah, agricultural system. There's a lot that needs to happen with our economy. There's a lot that needs to happen with our, all our industrialists. Oh. That's why I particularly like the fact that Mr. President is trying to intervene. Mr. President has seen how Dangote has been lamenting for the past few weeks. Oh. And they have to intervene to say, no, what is really up? Okay, let's even talk about the Dangote before I even mention uh, mentioned other issues yes. now. The Dangote issue, there have been talks concerning uh, the, the, the sale of crude because uh, over time, uh, the federal government, uh, through uh, loan negotiations and the foreign borrowings that were due, they, they, had, they signed future agreements and, uh, to, with some of these uh, international uh, lenders. And uh, most times, it is usually paid on our... Uh, our uh, crews that we produce. So, uh, from from analysis made so far, you know, even uh, what we used to earn for foreign um, currencies, just the leftovers from after we've uh, deducted the amount we used to settle part of our loan agreements and the interest, you know, would that even be enough for Dangote himself, you know, to get as much crude to produce to meet some local demands? So, because a lot of was even saying that maybe Dang Dangote might even need to start even going to oil exploration to pump to get his own crude. <laughs> so, so there's a lot of there's a lot of bottlenecks mm. between I mean within our oil sector. True. NNPC being a federal government, you know, um, is, you know, I think they are doing so much to scuffle Dangote's brilliant idea. Of you know putting up that refinery allegedly okay all right allegedly yes yeah this man is saying so I mean we saw Dangote we saw we saw him lamenting about people calling him a monopoly he's so so now this is somebody who has single-handedly built a refinery what trillions of naira or dollars and we have our own five or four refineries that are not working mm. now they're just trying to put uh, you know get the tobacco refinery to work. Mm. So a lot of our problems are can be traced back to our petroleum sector, yeah. because everything we do in this country we depend solely on oil. Oil. Yeah. Now we're in a, we're in the current facility now. If I'm if I'm not if you, if you want to find out, we might be running on a generator. So the, our power supply is epileptic. Yeah. It's not it's not steady. So again. The earlier we understand that a lot has to happen with our a lot has to happen with our economic system, mm. the, the better for us as a country. We cannot address social economic problems without talking about how to bring down how to bring down food prices, how to create jobs for youth, 
a lot of these people clamoring for protest are, you know, are, are the youth. And you cannot blame them for doing that. All right. Well said. Uh, so as we begin to round off now, yes, because uh, uh, both of you super, the CPPE is saying that uh, we stand to lose about 400 billion um, naira daily. You know, um, some people are saying that even the, 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 the tech and the telecom sector is actually uh, involved in the protest or trying to stomp the protest as it were now because people have been talking about um, being disconnected or they have come out to say that uh, they were not there. There's a lot of tension, you know, but in your opinion now, uh, as we uh, get uh, going and um, the October, August 1st is around the corner, what would you be saying to Nigerians and um, um, the youth and specifically those who are protesting and those who are not protesting because at the end of the day it is the voice of the people that matters because they are the ones that go to the market daily to buy this uh, food you know to pay for transportation and most of them cannot really meet their ends so again i said it earlier there's a lot of apprehension in the air i mean the whole, the whole country right now is tensed but we're very sure and starting with the i mean the igp of police has said that they would you know put out securities that will ensure that law and order is restored mm. and nobody goes out to destruct or vandalize critical government assets mm. again we cannot tell people not to protest it is a constitutional right as long as it is done with you know within the ambit of the law oh, yeah. i mean it's a constitutional right so it's just very important that the government listens to the crowd of people mm. people are hungry a lot of people cannot even feed three square meals I know people who have not even finished paying last last term school fees, mm. and another term is going to come out in the September. next few weeks. Yeah. So these are this, so these are issues. So the government needs to address these critical issues for yeah. us to really have a stable economy. Okay. When the, when the, when when the youths are gainfully employed, mm. then the country is going to move forward. All right. Oh, okay. You couldn't have said it better. Thank you so much, uh, Mustafa Iwenla, Thank for you so your much, time. Family. All right, indeed, we have been looking at the economic implications of the planned nationwide protest, which uh, is built to start from the 1st of August to the 10th of August. Uh, uh, the CPP has come out to say that Nigeria st uh, stands to lose about 400 billion naira daily. Either. So you can imagine the effect uh, if it escalates for 10 uh, days. Uh, as much as uh, we have said that Nigerians have the right to protest, but then whatever you are doing, do it peacefully and do it within the ambits of the law. That's the size of the show for today. My name is Justin Akadoni. Many thanks for being a part of it. See you again next time. Bye for now.